A very good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Welcome to the Youth Resilience in the Digital Age Conference. To begin, the Canadian Youth Federation and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada recognize the contributions of the First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples of Canada. In honor of reconciliation and education, we acknowledge and give gratitude to the Indigenous peoples whose lands we are on today. My name is Dan Martin, and I am the director of the International and Social Justice Program at the Canadian Teachers Federation, and it is my absolute pleasure to be the moderator of today's session. As we begin, I would like to recognize that this initiative was made possible by funding from Employment and Social Development Canada, or ESDC, and this week's conference is proudly co-hosted by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada and the Canadian Teachers Federation. Veuillez noter que la session aujourd'hui se déroule en anglais, mais la plateforme vous permet d'écouter en français. En bas de l'écran, un choix d'interprétation en français vous est offert. If you are using translation, an option to mute the original sound is available in your interpretation menu. A short Q&A session will follow today's presentation. Please use the Q&A function to ask questions to the presenter or to communicate with the technical staff. Et vous pouvez poser vos questions en français ou en anglais. Feel free to use the chat function to connect with other participants, to share resources, and in general, to interact. At the end of the presentation today, I'll invite the presenter to answer your questions. Uh, and as well, the presenter has uh, indicated that if you have questions throughout the session, please do not hesitate to put them in the Q&A or in the chat. And now I am very glad to welcome Ian Rowe from Kids Boost Immunity. Ian is the founding member of Kids Boost Immunity, and he, which was established in 2017. He served as the national manager for these uh, three years. Ian has worked with the BC Center for Disease Control since 2004 in various capacities, including communications, web management, and most recently advocating for immunization. Ian has a master's of management innovation and entrepreneurship, and his presentation today is called Inspiring Learning Through Global Citizenship. Welcome, Ian. Thanks so much for being with us today. Over to you. Thank you, Dan. And uh, let me just say I'm privileged to be coming to you today from the coast uh, land, unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. I'm in actually in Burnaby, British Columbia, just outside Vancouver. Um, and it's cold, but not as cold, I was saying just before, uh, as, as a lot of folks are experiencing, but cold for here because we're kind of wimps. I'm actually originally from Newfoundland, so I know real cold, bone chilling cold, but uh, uh, I wimped out and moved here many, many years ago. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, uh, two, uh, two, platform, but prime, two platforms, but primarily one, and that's Kids Boost Immunity. And that's a something that um, we've, de we've developed uh, for a national audience. Um, and, uh, but I'm going to start actually um, with a short video. I'm gonna share my screen, so just bear with me. And there we go. And uh, I'm, can everybody see that? I'll assume yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with a short video on uh, Kids Boost Immunity's sister site, and this was actually a predecessor uh, to Kids Boost Immunity called iBoost Immunity. Um, and this, this site, but they're both designed on the same premise, and there's a short video that actually kind of encapsulates what the spirit of what we're, we're trying to do here is. So I'm just going to play that, and it's only 30 seconds. You so. earned one vaccine. What if, by taking an online quiz, you could vaccinate a child in another part of the world. Here's how iBoost Immunity works. Take a series of quizzes about vaccination and the diseases they prevent. Each quiz earns a vaccine for a child in support of UNICEF Canada. Act locally. Vaccinate globally. Take the iBoost Immunity Quiz Challenge today. Okay. So 
Uh, iBoost Community, uh, as I said, is a predecessor to Kids Boost, but, but uh, it's worth, I think, mentioning. It was designed for adults to raise vaccine literacy. And that's really what I'm going to be talking about today is that we kind of have this philosophy of a, uh, you know, raising all boats, a rising tide raises all boats. And for us, I worked in uh, immunization and, and immunization communication and promotion for about 15 years now. And uh, that's what I'm interested in doing. It's, it's you know, probably aware that it's a hot topic these days with, with vaccines, um, but it always hasn't been. And so that's the struggle that I've been involved in for, for, for many years. So we developed, uh, we wanted to develop um, a way for people to be engaged with immunization uh, in a way that um, was a little bit more than the kind of the passive website to, to learn about it, but also to make it fun and, uh, and rewarding on, on multiple levels. So uh, we developed this website called iBoost Immunity which is really based on, uh, you, you know, you, you do something and then you earn something. What you earn are vaccines for UNICEF. Uh, we buy tetanus, polio, and measles vaccines for UNICEF. We donate them on behalf of our participants um, and they're distributed, distributed around the world. For iBoost Immunity, the audience is, a, is primarily an adult audience. Um, and uh, Kids Boost Immunity, which I'm gonna spend the bulk of the time talking about is for uh, as the name implies, kids. Uh, it's really targeted at schools. But uh, iBoost Community, I think, is useful potentially, at least mentioning for this audience, because we do have a lot of information here on, as you can see, COVID-19 misinformation. You can take quizzes, you can read articles. Um, we, we, our articles are kind of, um, uh, in a lot of cases, some cases are one-off articles, and in other cases, there, there are several that you can do. And there's one particularly relevant, uh, we, we wanted to help parents who may be at home uh, with their kids and doing remote learning or wanting to supplement some, some remote learning. Um, so there's a bunch of things that they can do here, how parents can fight misinformation from home, exactly that. And uh, so there's a kind of a misinformation toolkit that they can do with their kids. It's in seven parts um, and each part has a quiz associated with it. The quiz is the way the quizzes work um, uh, that's how, that's the mechanism that we use for donating vaccines. So, uh, if you beat the average score in iBoost Immunity, um, you will earn a vaccine for UNICEF. And on Kids Boost Immunity, it's a straight 80%. If you get 80% or greater on a quiz, uh, after you've done the lesson, then we will donate a vaccine on your behalf. Um, and, uh, so you can see here, there are, uh, many parts. I'll just zoom in on one for a second. They tend to be a combination of text uh, and or um, video. And this one doesn't have a, a video, but you can see there's a start a quiz at the, at the end. And uh, so we wanted to develop that in response to, to COVID-19. Um, there are also stories. These are first person narrative stories that uh, our users submit. And then uh, we have a way to amplify those stories, as you can see um, on iBoost Immunity as well. If you share to Facebook uh, or Twitter, you will also earn a vaccine. So again, it's another way to, to amplify those stories, uh, uh, very personal stories that, that we of course vet um, here. Uh, there are leaderboards and I'll, I'll talk a lot more about this on um, uh, Kids Boost Immunity, but this is a way to engender engagement and uh, a little, uh, some uh, slight competition or friendly competition, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so that site was around, uh, came, uh, launched in 2016 and uh, as you can see here from the homepage, we've donated 763,988 vaccines to be exact to UNICEF Canada. Um, and uh, uh, you know, that, that continues to grow. Based on this experience, we thought to ourselves, our, our working group, and I should mention, um, you know, I work for the BC Center for Disease Control, but uh, 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 there are several groups involved in, in building this application. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but uh, our group thought that we, you know, someone in, our, in one of our meetings said, what if, what if we tried this with kids? So we went down that road. We did a, a pilot in nine schools in British Columbia in 2017. It was uh, very successful. The level of engagement actually blew us out of the water. We had, we had nine schools answer almost 100,000 questions in a week, which was just blew us away and um, uh, they were really engaged. They liked the idea of the, comp the competition, uh, seeing who can earn more vaccines in the class or, or competing classes and things like that. And they also um, 
uh, like to, you know, earning vaccines, uh, that, that whole altruism thing. So I'll tell you a little bit about who we are and, um, and who our partners are. So this application has been developed. Uh, it's a, uh, based, based in British Columbia, but it's a national initiative. Um, and uh, it was uh, initially seed funded through the BC Ministry of Health through the Public Health Association of British Columbia, which manages the program. Uh, a lot of the logistical stuff is done out of our office uh, at the BC Center for Disease Control. But um, uh, I'm just gonna go to our partners here. As you can see, so the, uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada, when, after we did the pilot, uh, they liked what they saw. So they've been uh, a key funder ever since and, and helped us nationalize the program. We also have it, the, the website is also available in French, so French and English. Um, uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but we, we also have uh, partnerships with NHS Scotland and HSC in Ireland. Um, so the site is formally available in, in those uh, countries as well um, in schools. We also accept schools internationally on a case-by-case -case basis. So we have, uh, we have some schools around the world as well but the majority of schools are in, are in, uh, in Canada. Uh, because we're buying vaccines, we also have additional supporters um, from foundations to places like Pacific Blue Cross. And I apologize if you're hearing uh, wood cutting outside, but there's a carpenter next door. Um, and so we, it's, a, it's a mostly public initiative, but we do have some private sponsors to help us with things like paying for vaccines that we donate to UNICEF and, and programmatic costs and things like that. And, uh, and thank you to the Canadian Teachers Federation in, in their own, uh, and the Boys and Girls Club of Canada in their own small way for, for helping out uh, and for having me here today. Um, some of our, our partners, our in-kind partners include UNICEF Canada, of course, uh, who we uh, work with to manage the vaccines that we purchase uh, for kids around the world and the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, among others. Um, so um, one thing I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you, I'm going to surf around the site and hopefully you'll have some questions, but uh, I also want to warn you, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but uh, I want to get you involved in the site. So what we've done is we've set up a, a, a team and this is a, a way for uh, for you to actually experience what it would be like for a student to go on, on the website. And uh, um, so we're going to do that, but I'm going to show you a couple of things first. I'm going to log in um, and uh, show you what we've got here. Actually, you know what? Let me back up a second. Um, I'm, I'll show you the site. There are, two, there are three states of being, if you like, for the website. So there's what you would see if you go to kidsboostimmunity.com, which is this. We'll see a map of schools across the country. You know, if we zoom zoom in, we can see Jamie Bruno School in Northwest Territories. They haven't done any vaccines this season, unfortunately. Um, but uh, you know, we can we can zoom in any any school. We can zoom out, uh, zoom around the world if we want. And we have a, as I said, we have a few schools elsewhere. But um, uh, then you can also, if we scroll down, we can see kind of the all-time leading schools. There's a running tally of the number of questions that have been answered on the website. So we're just at, in total, just about 2.3 million questions have been answered. 160,000 vaccines have been earned uh, since we launched in 2018. We formally launched the website. All-time leading schools, Templeton Secondary, uh, uh, with 8,500 vaccines earned. But you can see Senator Reed Elementary, they've answered 131,000 questions. That's one school. Um, uh, so the level of engagement is actually very, very high. The average student answers close to 150 questions each uh, on school computers, uh, at home, on their own computers, on laptops, on their phones, whatever, whatever device they use to connect to the internet. Um, and, uh, and so we're very proud of that, actually, uh, because that's a, uh, that's a, that's a, real solid engagement. And we've heard this not only through our surveys and our evaluation, but also anecdotally from teachers that, that kids really enjoy helping others and, um, and competing with each other too, let's be clear. So recent activity feed. Uh, so you can see these are some of the teams that are actually active right now on the, on the site. And you can see some of the site uh, schools that have recently joined um, from BC, Ontario, one from Illinois here, uh, London, Grimsby, Ontario, Auckland, New Zealand, um, 
think that's Malaysia and Winnipeg. So, um, so this is this is the website. You can see uh, without doing anything. If you want to go and look at some of the example lessons, you can kind of see what we have, uh, a taste of what we have here. We do have a focus also on indigenous perspectives, and uh, you know this is an ongoing thing for us. But we, you know, we're on this mission to indigenize kids' peace community as much as possible, to infuse it with um, you know the indigenous lens uh, on on. Um, on what we're, we're trying to teach around immunization and science science literacy and things like that. And uh, uh, so uh, here's one on new diseases on turtle, new indigenous, new diseases on Turtle Island. Um, and uh, this is a, a beautiful story um, and uh, also talks about the impact of smallpox on indigenous communities, um, uh, you know, back in the 19th century and early 20th century. Um, and uh, uh, the, the thing about the public site that you're seeing here is you can, you can access these sample lessons and teachers can certainly use them as much as they want. What they don't have access to are the quizzes and being able to you know, have all the bells and whistles associated with creating a team, earning vaccines and, and all those kinds of things. So for that, you'll need to sign up. So I'll log in now and I'll show you the other, like once you've actually logged in as a teacher, if you're a teacher, what, what you would see as well as what you would see as a student, which will get you to log in. So uh, it looks similar. I can see an activity feed. You can see that now I'll also see top teams here. Um, uh, these are active top teams in this school year, for example. Uh, so we have a French school in North Vancouver, 13,000 questions answered, and that's one class to keep, keep in mind. So if you do the math, <laughs> they've, they probably answered uh, three, four, 500 questions for each student. So they're, they're pretty engaged. Um, and uh, uh, do, 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 what else here? So uh, how the site is really organized is, is around uh, two things, but primarily one thing. And the, the main thing are lessons. So we have about 80-ish or so lessons on the website that people can uh, freely access. This is a free application that anyone can use. And they're broken up, broken up into different topics, as you can see here. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to, so you're not seeing a whole bunch of things you don't need to see. So I'm going for today, for the classroom that I've created for everyone today, I'm the test teacher and you're going to be the test students. So I'm mass, what we call this is called masquerading as the test teacher. So this is my environment uh, as a teacher, what, what a teacher would see. When I go to lessons, I'm going to pick my grade. So I'm a grade six teacher today, and you're going to be competing to see if you know if you're smarter than a sixth grader. Um, so this is what I would see as a, a British Columbia grade six teacher, um, as opposed to uh, the lessons are, are um, curated by province and territory. So if I was a teacher from Manitoba in grade six, I would see um, different um, different curriculum, let's just say, because it's based on provincial and territorial curriculum that we see. It's broadly based around uh, science, social studies, and health curriculum in Canada. And uh, uh, if you're not aware, <laughs> well, we certainly weren't until when we started this, um, this adventure, but uh, I'm sure Dan is acutely aware. Uh, the curriculum is vastly different in every province and territory. So what you learn in grade six in BC, you may, you may learn in grade five in Ontario and grade eight in Manitoba. So it's, uh, it's been quite a challenge. Um, so you can see some of the things we have here. There's an introduction that, that I'll explain in a moment. Um, uh, we actually have some new material on Black History Month. The way that the site is organized, uh, these are the topics. And if you click on it, you can see there are seven lessons in this. Um, the four to seven means it's designed for grades four to seven. Broadly speaking, the site is really designed for grades four to 12 in, in Canada. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's how it's designed. We have to prepare for immunization day, which we're actually going to take you through. Um, each lesson has most of the lessons, or sorry, lesson topics have what's called a trivia section at the beginning. And this is what we're going to get you to do in a moment here. But um, uh, and that's designed to get the kids involved right away by doing questions right away, kind of a, a, a icebreaker, if you like. 
but there's also some evaluation value in that for us because it's kind of a pre-measure if you're looking to evaluate a, uh, an intervention like ours. You know, before the kids have engaged with the material, we want to get an idea of what they might know about the topic. And then at the end, we have a post-measure, the end of the topic that uh, allows us to see if they actually learned anything. So, um, yeah, so as I said, so the, we have lots of stuff on critical thinking and evaluation, evaluating online information. That's our, probably our most important uh, um, set of lessons right now. And it's actually one of our most popular set of lessons on how to think critically and be aware of misinformation. Um, generally, we do have lots of stuff on COVID-19 uh, specific that uh, is happening right now, both on misinformation as well as, you know, uh, fight, fighting the epidemic, as we call it here. I'm just going to go in quickly. You can see got some videos, uh, some text. So the idea is that the teacher can use this in a couple of different ways. They can go in and say, okay, kids, uh, we're going to register. Everyone's going to register to the class and we're all going to do this lesson together. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through the material, we'll ask questions. We have, um, worksheets. We have a whole teacher center um, for teachers to go and find lesson plans, for example, on how to approach lessons and um, worksheets and things of that nature. Um, but fundamentally, they can do one of two things. They can say, okay, we're going to go through this, uh, however they do it with uh, the lesson plan. And, uh, uh, you know, then at the end, we're going to individually do our quizzes. Um, if they can do them on their phones or they might assign them as homework. So, uh, you know, I'm assuming kids are in class here. Um, I know the remote learning thing has uh, kind of upset the apple cart, but if kids are in class and the, the um, teacher can sign it as homework uh, to do the quiz at home if you don't have access to the computer lab or you don't allow phones or you, there's not access at the ready for, for computers. Um, the other way that uh, teachers can do it is they can assign it as a, um, uh, you know, it can be teacher led or student led essentially. So the teacher can say, okay, kids, you've, you've been in the platform now, assuming they're familiar with it a, a little bit. Uh, we've got 20 minutes left in the class. I want you to do these four lessons, go. And then it's up to them. They can do it at their own pace. So that's good for maybe accelerated learners who want to do extra um, uh, or, uh, you know, the point is the teacher at their discretion can use it in any way they like. So, um, yeah, so that's an example of that. I'm just going to go back here. The other thing, uh, you know, in terms of that accelerated learning, the other main section on the site is the earn more section. So we have the lessons which are aligned strictly to curriculum. Then for those keener kids or kids that always want to do more, um, we have an earn more section, uh, which really allows them to earn more vaccines. And these are strictly quizzes. So similar to iBoost Community, iBoost Community is designed, you know, most of our users and iBoost, the adults uh, come in and do a quiz and the learning modality is the quiz itself. So did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Oh, I got some feedback. I got it wrong. Here's, here's why. Um, so these are uh, extra, extra things that they can do. Um, here's one on critical thinking. They can do another quiz. There are 12 questions in this quiz. If they get 80%, then they will earn a vaccine. Um, if they don't, then uh, uh, the good news is they can do it as many times as they as they want. The bad news is they have to do the whole quiz again. And uh, we do that, believe it or not, intentionally because teachers have told us that redundancy and repetition is good for, for learning. Um, and uh, so uh, lots of kids, first of all, don't get it right the first time. They don't necessarily don't get 80%. But the vast majority of them will, will do it again. And it's, you know, it's not necessarily because they have a love of learning. Let's just say it that way. Some do, but uh, I'm not going to pretend that they all do. But what they do like uh, is earning that vaccine. And by far the biggest reason for engagement with Kids Boost Immunity and I Boost Immunity to a lesser degree, but especially with Kids Boost, is the opportunity for kids to have agency, especially at this time, and feel empowered that they, they can do something positive in the world. And that positive is, I just earned a vaccine for another child in the world. So it's the idea of kids helping kids. 
And it's, they're not just going to talk about it, they're actually going to do it. And so what they end up seeing is uh, they'll see the, the fruits of their labor in that sense from the leaderboards. And the class has a, a class leaderboard, which I'll, I'll show you as we go through here. But uh, they'll, see, they'll see how they're doing in the class. They'll see how they're doing vis-a-vis -vis the other kids. And uh, if the teacher chooses to show that, the teacher has full autonomy to kind of show how everyone is doing or not. Um, and uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, the, the idea of altruism, uh, wanting to help others, is the main driver, followed by close second is, is that uh, uh, sense of competition. It really depends on the child. Um, but those really drive engagement. So without further ado, I think um, uh, if there are no questions uh, right now, I'm going to get folks to log in as a student. I'm sorry, sign up as a student. And uh, to do that, what I'm going to ask people to do is to go to kidsboostimmunity.com, so this website here, and uh, go to the sign up uh, link here. It's at the top right. Um, and uh, sign up to Kids Boost Immunity as a student. So when you click on the sign up button, it will default to I am a student. You're going to put in your first name, last name. You can put in whatever you want, but uh, uh, we generally recommend for teachers because this is a way for teachers to manage their class and so to, who, to know who's who in, in the class. Um, uh, so we recommend first name, last name, initial. We don't collect any other information from students for privacy, obviously, for obvious privacy reasons. Um, and only the teacher can see this. Nobody else can see this, just, just to be crystal clear. The key thing that's going to connect you to the class that I've created is going to be the team registration code. So I'm going to put in John D for John Doe. Uh, the team registration code is boys and girls. All one word. So you need to put that in. If you put that in, that will connect you automatically to my team if all is well in the world. Um, and, uh, and then you're going to have to create your own password, you know, put in whatever you want, uh, but keep it. We're, we're, we're going to scrub all these accounts after today. So don't worry, uh, we're not going to steal any passwords, but just put in one, two, three, four, if that's, that's what you want, even though it's not best password practice. Um, and uh, that will get you into the, into the class. And then create new account. Now it's saying my password isn't isn't very strong, so I'm just going to do that. Yep. And we had a question in the chat. Um, they want to know what's the age range for the full site. So it's grades four to twelve, so roughly nine to seventeen. Perfect. Thanks very much. Okay. And and it's organized in a way. Uh, we have a whole curriculum area for teachers, and as part of the teacher center. Um, that if we get time, I'll, I'll, I'll show folks a little bit, but it's broken up by province and territory. So you can go uh, as a teacher to see where the curriculum fit is by grade and by subject, if that makes sense. So I'm going to wait now for a moment and allow people to register. And I'm gonna monitor to see how many folks we get. Um, I'm going to log out of here and I'm going to log back in as, as my regular self. Yeah, and there's just a question that uh, Tracy's asking, can we go back later and use the same info to register an account if we already registered as a student? So how the site works is that students cannot register independent of a teacher. So uh, because again, for privacy, collecting that information. So uh, when a teacher registers, they, they have a, a, 
a higher bar, let's just say, we actually require their email address uh, because we need to approve them. We need to validate them as a teacher um, and that's a manual process. It's usually done uh, within a few hours, but, but uh, once the teacher uh, has created an account, then they can create a team for their account. So for example, they will go to my teams and add a team. It's a very straightforward process but it's only at that point when they add, they create their team, their team name, not mine is test team or whatever today. Uh, that's where they will add the secret code, um, which is the team registration code that the boys and girls that I gave you. At that point, that's the kind of secret code or promo code that they will tell their students to create uh, an account as, as you guys are doing right now. And um, so, yeah, so those students cannot create an account without knowing what the code is that the teachers created first. Does that make sense to everybody or is that not clear? I'm just, it's clear to me, but I, obviously I, I know, I know this site probably too well, but um, uh, so yeah, so these accounts today are, are just temporary accounts. Um, if you were a real teacher, if I was a real teacher, um, sorry, and uh, you created an account, it would be good. You'd be good to go. And uh, uh you know, a teacher can create, I should say, uh, they only need to register once, but we have uh, some teachers that have 10 teams. So they have, may, may have 10 different classes. Uh, we have one in here in Burnaby that's that way. And uh, she uh, is a superwoman and has created 10 different classes. All, the, all of those classes all have different registration codes, of course, because they're uh, 10 different classes. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to go to my team and I'm going to, if all is well, it's actually the team we created today is the Boys and Girls Club. That's what we called it. Um, and so here are all our members. So here are the folks that have registered so far. Yeah. So we've got 11. Um, I... I wonder if is anyone else, this is kind of hard to monitor, I guess, on this, but I just want to get a sense of if, if, if this is enough here or should we wait a, a moment, see if we get any more. Um, okay, well, let's just, let's just press on. I'm not seeing any more. Okay, so we have, uh, it looks like 11 or 10 right now because I created one dummy account. Um, so as a, as a teacher, um, you also have full editorial control. So if, a, if a, one of your students forgets their password, for example, or you want to edit the team and delete an account, um, then you can, you can do that for whatever reason. Um, but so what we're going to get you to do now is if you've registered, you should, you should have seen a screen that, uh, asks you to, to do a survey at the beginning and um for those of you that let me just go here i'm going to go back in as my as is my as my student self so i'm logging in now as john d which is my student Oh, sorry, John D. That's the password I did. Okay, so um, I've logged in. The, the first uh, lesson you should see is the introduction. I actually did this earlier this morning, so that's why. <laughs> um, uh, but we're going to we're going to ignore that. Essentially, that is a, uh, you, it's a quiz, but you can't get any of the questions wrong. So it's really organized around how, to, to, essentially to orient you to the site, to explain how the site works around. If you get 80% on a quiz, you'll learn a vaccine, um, how the leaderboards work, uh, things like that, a series of questions. After that, really, then it's up to you to decide or the teacher to decide where you want to go. So for today's demonstration, we're going to get folks who registered to go to lessons and um, you'll see prepare for immunization day and we're going to get you to do the trivia quiz for how to prepare for immunization day um, and so it's only 
two or three questions, I believe. So we're going to get you to do it, and then we'll we'll, we'll see how you did compared to to um, the rest of the country. So we'll just take a minute to to see that, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go back. back here and I should be as folks are doing it I should be able to review the results um, to see how people did so I don't want to view them too early because when I do that um, at least here that I'm sort of giving up, giving away the answers, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go on my other computer here and take a look. Okay, we have four, eight, nine responses so far, which is almost everybody. Or sorry, eight responses. So we'll just maybe wait for one or two more. So as I said, you know, uh, each of these or most of these lessons with, with a few exceptions, uh, they have this trivia section. And again, this is a way uh, picture yourself as a student in the class and the first thing the teacher says is do okay I want you to do these, these quizzes here um, so it's a way to get the kids engaged um, as quickly as possible in into the the application it also gives the teacher a sense of the room if you like in terms of what what the kids know um, so it looks like we have everyone has done the quiz now so uh, uh, and I, you know, I think one of the cool things about it for the teachers, then they can they can see how they did. And and you know, we've been in classrooms where uh, they look at this, and the teacher will, okay, kids, are you ready? To, you're ready to see how you did. You're everybody ready? And the kids get all excited, especially at the younger ages. Of course, they're adorable. So I'm going to go to the, now. As a teacher, I get access to this, but not, of course, the students students don't. So uh, for the first question about what percent of sexually active people will get at least one human papillomavirus infection at some point in their lives? The correct answer is 75%. Um, three of you got that right. That's 27% of the responses. Unfortunately, the national average to get this right is 62%. So you've, you didn't do as well as a sixth grader, I'm sorry to say. Don't feel bad. You know, I've been to health conferences with nurses and they don't do that well either. So, um, but uh, yeah, so you didn't do that well on that one. Second question, after vaccination, you are protected from the disease within approximately, the correct answer is two weeks. So 27% of you, three of you got it right. Uh, again, the national average is 65%. So again, I'm sorry, you didn't do that well there either, but this is why you're doing this. This is, this is good. Um, and and the, the third question here is, is something we put in, uh, and it's part of our, actually part of our evaluation as you can probably uh, gather. Um, there are no correct, uh, incorrect answers to this one. This is really an evaluation question. We want to get your thoughts prior to doing anything on Kids Boost Immunity uh, with regards to how to prepare for immunization day. And uh, as you may be aware, uh, HPV vaccine is one of the vaccines that kids get in school. It's a very important one from our perspective. It does prevent cancer. Um, but uh, it's uh, we, wanted, we wanted to get the kids feeling about what uh, they would like to do. So uh, again, there are no incorrect answers here, but uh, uh, six of you said you would like to get it, four of you don't want to get it, um, and uh, one person said they didn't know. Um, so we do have a, a, a way to, to measure uh, post the, the, um, the lesson as well. I'm just going to quickly go back and show you. So if, 
if you're in a classroom and you did that, uh, let's say leading up to immunization day in school, let's say the week before or a couple of weeks before, uh, before vaccination day in school, this is a good way to get kids uh, talking about immunization in a positive, constructive way, doing something good for the world as well, and uh, helping other children and, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of create that positive atmosphere. But we've also found it also helps reduce some, some of the anxiety that kids might have about vaccines in general. The, uh, you know, most children at that age barely know what a vaccine is, let alone, uh, maybe that's changing now with, with COVID, but, but certainly pre-COVID, um, they're pretty much blank slates when it comes to, to, to vaccines. Um, so that uh, naturally engenders fear uh, in a lot of cases because when you don't know something and it's a needle and it's scary and all that. So, so we wanted to provide a positive space for, for this to happen. So after you do the trivia quiz, then you can do um, uh, all, the, all the quizzes, uh, sorry, all the lessons on this particular topic. Um, and in British Columbia, the kids get HPV in grade six, they get HPV, hepatitis B, and uh, varicella chickenpox vaccine, uh, potentially if they need it. And uh, they can do a little bit more. Uh, each of these lessons has a quiz as well. And the teacher can also review the results of the class and compare it to the national average as well. Um, uh, teachers really like that idea of, oh, you're, you're, you're above average or, you know, from the national average, you guys are, you know, come on, you got to pick up your bootstraps and do better. Let's do it again. That kind of thing. So uh, teachers really like that idea. Um, so uh, I'm just trying to get the sense of time here. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to say we could do, we could do another uh, short quiz, but I think this sort of gets, gets at the spirit of it. I don't think we necessarily need to, just in the interest of time, uh, unless people really want to. Um, what I was going to spend the rest of the time just talking about would be some of the other lessons, how they're organized, um, as well as the leaderboards, and then take any questions. Are there any other questions on the chat that, that I, um, or any, anybody has at this point? Uh, I think we're good for now. There's nothing on the chat, but I encourage all the participants to uh, pose your questions as they come up. Okay, great. So, um, as I said, the lessons, one of the things that we actually, we learned pretty early on, and um, in retrospect, it was, it should have been more obvious, but, but, uh, you know, my background is in, in promoting vaccines and raising literacy about this issue, uh, uh, you know, and that was, prior to COVID when, when it became such a, a um, uh, prominent thing, let's just say. But uh, uh, so one of the things we earned, learned early on is that we didn't want the site to just be about vaccines, okay? Because guess what? Teachers, it's not really that big a thing for them. They, they're, they're quite rightly concerned about making sure that the learning outcomes they have in the, in the classroom uh, are met uh, on a broad range of topics. And so um, for that reason, most of the lessons on Kids Boost Immunity actually aren't about vaccines. It's certainly not directly about vaccines with you know, a few exceptions like this one, how to prepare for immunization day. So we've really broadened our curriculum to make it applicable to uh, uh, provincial and territorial learning outcomes. And so you can see we have one here on Canada's three levels of government. Um, we have lots of stuff on germs and the body's defense system and how vaccines help. Uh, the spread of infectious diseases, and co this is, this is COVID-19 specific to some degree, um, uh, because it's obviously prominent right now. But, you know, what are outbreaks and pandemics and epidemics? That is something, for example, in grade eight in British Columbia, I know this well, um, that is a, um, something that kids learn about. They learn about outbreaks and, and pandemics, for example, in science. And so, uh, these lessons have been very carefully constructed uh, by teachers and for teachers. Um, to reflect these learning outcomes. And uh, uh, the other thing I should mention is that, you know, in this particular one about uh, the spread of infectious diseases and COVID-19, there are eight lessons within, within the topic. Um, you, you have to do the trivia first before you do any of the lessons. You can't skip. It's locked. Um, and the only other thing that's locked is the final quiz. So the final quiz you only get access to after you've done all eight lessons. And the reason for that is because it's meant to be a summary of what you've learned in this topic. So it's another um, avenue for the teachers to be able to uh, uh, measure the learning outcomes. 
and uh, they can see it by child. We don't have time to get into it, but they can go in and look at their each child's account and see how they did on every quiz um, and how many times they took the quiz maybe to take it, uh, things like that. But that final quiz is also for us a very important post-evaluation measure. So we have the trivia as a pre-evaluation. And then the final quiz is really, uh, we ask some of the same questions, for example, that we asked in the trivia uh, section at the beginning. Uh, and we want to see how they do to see if, if they actually learn something from it. And you know, happy to report, again, we don't have time to get into it, but, but we've had significant changes in knowledge about immunization, confidence in immunization, support for immunization, willingness to tell others about um, whether it be the website or um, that immunization is important. Kids, uh, kids have responded very well to that. So we also have lots of lessons on social studies. And, uh, you know, because we're donating vaccines to UNICEF, there's sort of a, well, there is a social justice component to, uh, to kids boost immunity. And so this fits very well with, um, uh, with social studies. And so on this particular one on global inequality, we have lessons um, about misinformation, the main reasons that affect global inequality. We have lots of stuff here referring to UNICEF, referring to the WHO, um, you know, uh, basic human rights and, you know, what, what can affect uh, global inequality around the world, you know, from geography to education, access to water, things like that. Um, and uh, they usually are accompanied by videos from WHO, the Global Vaccine Alliance, um, uh, various organizations, UNICEF, um, places like that. So you can see here. Uh, yeah, and you know, we've taken this directly from, from uh, unicef.org as an example around, these are vaccine preventable diseases and how many people die in this, in this particular case and the reasons, uh, main reasons why. Um, so uh, the other um, thing we have, is probably worth mentioning, uh, antibiotics, we have a section on antibiotics and because uh, that's um, another very important topic, antibiotic resistance. But the other thing that uh, we've learned in our first couple of years is that for teachers, um, you know, the real gold standard for, for meeting learning outcomes is really around lessons that can be, especially for younger ages and younger uh, grades, teachers that can be cross-curricular in nature. So um, uh, if you can do a lesson that can touch on a few subjects at, at once, that's a good thing. Um, and uh, that are inquiry based. And what I mean by that is that where, where the children can kind of, we, we, we call it choose their own adventure, but really it's, it's they get to choose how they want to interact with the lesson. So in this particular lesson, it's called an, uh, Become an Outbreak Investigator. Here we have a fictional outbreak of measles in a school. And uh, uh, the child is tasked with finding, investigating where the outbreak happened, how it happened, how many kids have been affected, how many people in the community have been affected. And uh, so there's, there's some math involved, um, uh, you know, uh, around percentages and things like that and calculating. So as you can see here, there's not one way to do this. We can, we can start, uh, uh, start the story from the beginning um, or if they finish the first task. This is, this, is a, this is a massive lesson, to be honest. It's about 70 pages in total, if you, if you were to lay it out end to end. Um, but it's not meant to be done, you know, one page at a time uh, in a linear fashion. Kids can do it in, in lots of different ways. There are six, six tasks, associate, tasks associated with this particular lesson that, that are typically done over one to two weeks. And so this is a real deep dive. This is not a quick lesson you do in 20 minutes. But if you start the story from the beginning, then it talks about the measles emergency. You, you get a sense of what's happening. And we're actually going to be... Uh, this is all in text right now, but we're going to be actually changing this to a comic. So it'll be a little bit more engaging uh, for the student, but it'll be done in kind of a comic book format. Um, then you can take a look at the worksheets. Uh, the point is, is that there are multiple ways to, to attack this, this thing. And um, so we have, we have a bunch of lessons that are kind of based around this idea of uh, inquiry-based uh, lessons. Um, and... The other one I want to show you was the cross-curricular research assignment. So this is similar to that idea, except 
uh, you know, in the class, you can give the kids seven options um, based on what they're interested in. So um, if, you know, they can choose if you're prime minister, how would you solve the issue of misinformation? They can go down, they can take that path. And there are, there are several lessons that have been curated um, uh, along that idea that they can take to do. So it's, uh, it's sort of a side doorway of, of kids accessing. It's all the same lessons they're going to access, but they're, they're organized around themes. They want to create a poster, some of the things they can do to keep yourself healthy from diseases. An evil villain, you get uh, you try to get uh, people sick through misinformation. You got caught. I must write an apology letter. <laughs> and it, you know we have one an indigenous story writer. Sorry, um, with elders. And uh, uh, so yeah, so this is this is the idea here that you, um, uh, as we like to say, you can choose your own adventure. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to go to my team here. And. Uh, so we can see here as a, as a school, you would be able to, uh, and as a teacher, you would, you would be able to see your top vaccine earners. We just have a couple here that have earned some, some vaccines from the test class today, but, but picture a list of your, of your class um, and how many vaccines they've earned. And then you can also see, um, this is the test school. So this class that was created is part of the, the test school class. So I can see all of the other classes in my school to see how they're doing relative to my class. And so this is a great way to engender competition here. Um, we don't have time to get into it, but there, you know, there's lots of access that the teacher has to, um, you know, post a team update to, to everybody, for example, when they're logged in. Um, they can view detail scores, as I, as I mentioned, um, to really dig down and see how each student is doing vis-a-vis -vis each other. Um, they can edit the team. They can help the, the students if they have, have any problems with their um, uh, with their logging in and things like that. And uh, and you know you can see how your school is doing relative to, to others, or how your class is doing relative to, to others through the leaderboard. So the kids really really enjoy this. Um, so I think that's about it for me um, in terms of the the platform itself. As I mentioned, it's free for schools. Uh, to use across Canada. Um, so, you know, we really appreciate, appreciate this opportunity. If you are a teacher uh, or know a teacher um, that you think might be interested in this, um, uh, please send them to kidsboostcommunity.com. And uh, I should also say, uh, this is also available for homeschool teachers as well. We have a homeschool option. You may have seen that when you signed up uh, as a student. Um, there is a, a, a homeschool option for uh uh, for teachers, um, whether they be, uh, you know, prior to COVID, they, they will always homeschool their kids, or they're temporarily homeschooling their children as part of COVID-19. Um, so we do all we we do have uh, we do allow for that as well. And so, yeah, if you know a teacher, uh, um, please pass on the website. We'd be, uh, you know, we're trying to get this to as many schools as possible uh, across the country, and um, uh, we're at about. We have about 3,000 teachers registered right now across the country and in about five or 600 schools or so. And, um, uh, you know, we, we want to expand this as, as much as possible because we, um, you know, we want, we do think that helping other kids is a, is a good thing, um, but uh, uh, we really want to, to raise literacy around, um, as I mentioned earlier, vaccines, uh, but more broadly around science, uh, science literacy more broadly uh, to, to, to build resiliency. And as we like to say, inoculate them from misinformation, uh, kind of like the inoculation they're going to hopefully be getting in the next few months against COVID. So um, I'll, I'll leave it at that and I'm happy to answer any questions. Great, Ian, thank you very, very much. Uh, that obviously is a tremendously rich resource and uh, I very much appreciate uh, as you talked about the cross-curricular nature, the inquiry-based nature of the resource as well. There are a couple of questions. I think the one's been answered already, but we'll just confirm. Um, Bobby's asking, does the teacher section cost money to have access? No, the, the entire thing is free. What it costs you is you need to register. So, um, and that would cost you your email address. So if you, uh, and, and I should say, we do require a school email address. So, um, Unless you're a homeschool teacher, um, we do ask for 
uh, you know, your, your school email address to validate. And um, obviously, if you're a homeschool teacher, Gmail is, is fine, but um, or something like that, Yahoo. But there's, there's no cost at all. Uh, if you want to get access to the teacher center and there is all the resources like the lesson plans and um, worksheets and things like that, just need to register. That's it. Fantastic. Uh, another question here, Ian, from Beverly. How might a teacher respond to a parent who does not want his or her student involved? For example, vaccination is against their personal and maybe religious beliefs. Yeah. So it may surprise you, but we, we've never come across that. Uh, I, I know it's a thing out there. One of the things that I think protects us a little bit from that is, is the social justice aspect of, uh, of the site. So it may sound counterintuitive, but uh, some parents that uh, may not vaccinate their children don't necessarily object to vaccinating other children around the world through UNICEF. Um, there are some out there that probably do, I'm, I'm sure, but uh, most don't. Um, it, they just don't, they're just reluctant about getting their own children vaccinated for, for their own reasons, right? So, and that's, and that's fine. Um, the other thing that we, other reason I think that we've been um, mostly spared from, from that coming up a lot is the broad um, lens that we've taken to our curriculum. As I said early on, this is not a site exclusively, exclusively about vaccines. It's a site about science literacy. So we have, for example, uh, lots of lessons on the scientific method and correlation versus causation and understanding bias and, as I said, critical thinking and, and uh, things like that. Those are baked into the curriculum. They have nothing uh, overtly to do with vaccines. Um, they're important for, you know, for what we're interested in, which is, which is of course vaccines, but, uh, and vaccination, because if you can, uh, you know, if children can be scientifically literate, then they're in all likelihood as adults going to probably vaccinate. So, um, uh, so that's the other way that we, I think have avoided that to the, to, to a large degree. That's not to say that it, yeah, it might happen, but, um, we don't, uh, we very, we haven't really heard of, of that happening to us. I, I really can't think of another issue that is more at the forefront of people's minds right now than vaccination, considering the, the role of the COVID-19 vaccine is happening now. Um, my, my question, I guess, is that uh, I read an article this morning in the Globe and Mail that said just 64% of Canadians trust vaccines to be effective and safe, a survey suggests. Uh, how, how do you respond to that? And I mean, that, that obviously is not um, uh, students and, and children and youth that we're talking about, but adults. And do you find that the uh, children that are participating in these, these programs through Kid Boost Immunity, are they having an impact on their own parents? So that's what we're starting to measure. And that's the reason we started the site. I mean, we started iBoost Immunity first because of exactly that, you know, that vaccine hesitancy, uh, those opinions become hardened over time and they're harder to change. With kids, as you, you know very well, um, those opinions aren't hardened yet. And so we want to, um, uh, you know, as part of the, edu the educational curriculum, um, hopefully play a positive role in that. But, you know, what we have seen anecdotally, and this is hard to measure, but anecdotally what we have seen is that kids be do become positive vectors to their parents. In, this, in a similar way, you know, if they go home excited because they've earned, you know, 28 vaccines for UNICEF um, that day when, you know, their mom and dad asked them what they did. And I said, oh, that's what, you know, that's what I did today. I earned 28 vaccines. And um, then, uh, you know, then they become this positive influence on their parents, similar to how they did it with recycling and influence their parents that way, or, or you know, smoking cessation, things like that. So behavior change is really, really hard. Uh, I think we all know that, especially with adults. But we do believe that kids can pl play a role in that. Uh, you know, apart from that, we are trying to, and we think with, with you know, with the crisis, a, a potential silver lining for the crisis is that, uh, you know, we do have an opportunity as we're all going through this pandemic in real time and hopefully, knock on wood, the vaccines helping us get out of it, of being witness, bearing witness to vaccines actually doing you know, what, what science has said that they, they can do. And so we hope that some of those opinions from, from parents will become less, less hardened. Um, 
but that's that's a, I mean that's a reality of of the business that I'm in is that um, uh, you know um, it's kind of the idea of the the internet being a being a bit of a swamp that way you know it's obviously got a lot of great benefits but uh, anyone can write anything and uh, it it it's you can't control that so we're we're trying the idea with these platforms is to really meet people where they're at online. And, but do it in a way that they can engage and do something positive when they engage. There are lots of quizzes out there for all kinds of things that people can do. Um, you know, which friend's character are you? Do the quiz, for example, or which Game of Thrones character are you? Uh, we wanted to take that and, and uh, do some social good with it as well. Um, but meet, Absolutely. try to meet people where they're at. Cer certainly engaging, certainly positive. Uh, Ian, I can't thank you enough. We're at the end of our session, unfortunately, but... Um, but, but certainly we have a debt of gratitude to you and uh, to everybody who is participating. We invite you to view the resources uh, and the recording of today's event on the page and you see the address there on the screen. Uh, we also invite you to tweet about the conference session uh, using the hashtag again that you see on the screen and tag us on social media. So uh, Ian, once again, thanks so much for answering the questions uh, for the great presentation. It really, really has been a great pleasure to have you with us today. Many, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks to...